Welcome back to Book Break. In this video, we are talking about some absolute icons from history, from the present day, that have biographies or autobiographies that you can read to learn more about these incredible people. Starting with some music icons, one of the first names that comes to mind has to be Elton John. He is without a doubt a music icon. He released seven chart-topping albums back to back in the space of just three years and he has won every prestigious music award out there. He's also an LGBTQIA plus icon. He's been publicly out since 1976 and in the 90s he founded his AIDS foundation. He has raised hundreds of millions of pounds for the cause and he continues to publicly advocate for the LGBTQIA plus community. He's also a knight, that's pretty iconic. And this book, Me, is his story in his own words for the first and only time. Another name that instantly comes to mind when you think of music icons is of course Mariah Carey. She literally won the Billboard Icon Award in 2019 and she is so deserving of that title, as well as being one of music's biggest superstars. She is also a Christmas icon. The moment you hear those opening notes of All I Want For Christmas each year is officially the definition of when Christmas begins. It's just the law, I didn't make it up. But Mariah Carey has also gone through a lot in her life and so this memoir, The Meaning of Mariah Carey, is really a story of her strength and resilience that makes her such an icon. And then for a bittersweet one, I've got here the book My Amy by Tyler James. So Amy Winehouse was an absolute music icon before she tragically died in 2011 of alcohol poisoning. But before that, she became the first British artist to win five Grammys. She also tied with Beyonce for the record at that time of the most Grammy wins by a female artist in a single night. And she was just incredibly talented. She had this really unique singing voice that was just absolutely captivating to anyone who heard it. And she never really wanted to be famous. And ultimately, that was a lifestyle that destroyed her. So this book is written by her childhood best friend who was actually living with her up until the point that she died. So it's a very loving and personal story about who Amy Winehouse really was. Okay, then moving on to some TV icons, starting with Floella Benjamin, or Baroness Floella Benjamin. She was the first Trinidadian woman to be elevated to the House of Lords. Floella Benjamin is the author of the classic children's memoir, Coming to England, which is her story of moving from Trinidad to London as part of the Windrush generation. She then became a TV presenter, essentially the face of British children's TV for a long time, and she continues to add advocate for children of all ages. Icon. David Attenborough is one of the UK's best loved broadcasters. He's had a career with the BBC spanning over 60 years, both behind the camera and in front of it. And he's also been the one to open a lot of people's eyes to the climate crisis and why our beautiful planet needs our help. So that's pretty iconic. David Attenborough has written several books, including a number of autobiographies, most recently A Life on Our Planet, which is this really compelling story. It's part memoir and part the memoir of our planet. Stephen Fry has written three autobiographies to cover the many amazing experiences of his life, working as a writer, actor, director, quiz show host, comedian. He is another LGBTQI plus icon who has spoken very frankly about his early struggles with his sexuality, but he is now very happily married to Elliot Spencer. And he has also been very, very honest about his experiences with depression and bipolar, really helping to decrease the stigma there. Then some icons from the arts. David Bailey is a legendary photographer who has worked with so many celebrity subjects and has become more famous than all of them. I think the reason his photographs are so iconic is because he always manages to capture a whole new side of his subjects. He really knows how to find people's personalities and capture that on film. It takes a very insightful person to be able to do that so well. So unsurprisingly, he has a lot of very good stories to tell and he tells them in his book, Look Again, with his characteristic sense of humour and brutal honesty. 
Another bittersweet story is that of Jean-Michel Basquiat, probably the most successful black visual artist in history, who tragically died aged 27 of a heroin overdose. And the book Widow Basquiat by Jennifer Clements is his story told through the eyes of his lover and muse Suzanne Malik. So this is a really interesting book because it's the story of their very turbulent at times relationship and it really brings her to life as well as him. And then of course there have been a lot of books written about Frida Kahlo including Hayden Herrera's biography of her. So why is Frida Kahlo such an icon? So many reasons. Kahlo really put so much of her life and personality and experiences into her work, meaning that she's an artistic icon, also a feminist icon, also a Mexican icon. So many different sides of her shine through in her work. But her work didn't really gain popularity until after her death. She died young, aged 47, some believe by suicide. And in her life, Frida Kahlo really openly defied gender stereotypes, smoking, boxing, wearing manly clothes, even exaggerating the more masculine parts of her look, such as her heavy monobrow, in her own self-portraits. She was openly bisexual and she's a feminist icon because so much of her work is centred around experiences that were very taboo at the time, such as birth, breastfeeding, abortion and miscarriage. And then finally there are political icons such as Michelle Obama, whose autobiography is called Becoming. You may have heard of it, it's been very very popular. So Michelle Obama was of course the first lady, she was the first black first lady of the United States and in that role she did a lot to make the White House more inclusive and she advocated for girls and women in the US and around the world to have better access to education including physical education and so to be able to lead fuller, healthier lives. And all of this while being generally iconic with her amazing outfits and powerful speeches and fantastic dance moves that we got to see on James Corden's Carpool Karaoke. But she's actually been an icon long before her husband became the president. So in her book, Becoming, she writes all about her life from her childhood and her journey to becoming the amazing woman that she is today. This one's a bit of a different one, Machiavelli. He's a bit of a sinister icon. I mean, we literally use the word Machiavellian to mean cunning and scheming. Machiavelli believed that leaders should be willing to sometimes act immorally at the right times. But in this biography, Alexander Lee explores the man behind the myth, revealing him perhaps to have been a much more sympathetic character than history remembers him as. And finally, Gandhi and his autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth. So Mahatma Gandhi is iconic because of his non-violent protest, which helped to topple an empire and inspired future generations of protesters. He is famous for being the leader of the Indian independence movement and his form of peaceful protest proved incredibly effective, helping to slowly sway international public opinion. Even though Gandhi himself never raised a weapon, he was assassinated by an extremist a year after India gained independence, but his model for peaceful resistance has gone on to inspire future activists all over the world. And before he died, he wrote an autobiography talking about his life and his ideology. So, a pretty iconic read. If you're a fan of non-fiction like this and want some more recommendations, I will link here to a whole playlist of all of our videos where we talk about non-fiction books. And in the meantime, I would love to know in the comments below what are some of your favourite biographies and autobiographies that you've read about incredible, iconic people. See you next time!